Here at Pocket Now, we've just finished reviewing the Yota Phone 2, a dual-screened smartphone we called one of the most innovative we'd seen, and one which wouldn't be possible without something called e-ink. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is a guided tour of e-ink, what it does and how it works. E-ink powers much more than just the Yota Phone. Special feature phones of yesteryear, like Samsung's Alias 2 and Motorola's Motophone, ran on the technology, and a host of electronics from wristwatches to smart cards make use of it today. Most famously, of course, if you've ever used an e-reader like Amazon's Kindle, you've used e-ink in the form of something called an e-paper display, or EPD. But how does it work? The e-ink corporation invited us to their headquarters and innovation center in Billerica, Massachusetts, to find out. The e-ink corporation got its start at MIT back in 1997. The time since has been filled with hard work dotted by a series of firsts. It took seven years for the first EPD e-book to come out in 2004, followed a year later by the first EPD watch, followed a year later by the first e-paper phone. It wasn't until 10 years after the MIT spin-off that the first Amazon Kindle launched, and it, along with various other e-readers, began escalating public consciousness of this strange new display medium. So what is it? Put simply, e-ink is, well, ink, chemically very similar to pigments used in the printing industry. But rather than being deposited on paper, this ink takes the form of tiny capsules, about the diameter of a human hair, sandwiched between two electrodes. In the implementation we're most familiar with, these capsules contain white and black pigments separated by a transparent fluid. The pigments carry opposite charges. In this example, negative for black and positive for white. So a negative charge applied to the bottom of the capsule repels the black pigment, forcing it to the top and making it visible on screen as a darkened area. Reversing that action by applying a positive charge switches positions of the particles, creating a white area instead. Making text or graphics out of these dark or light bits is a matter of applying the correct charge across millions of capsules, and the technology can even bifurcate the charge for still sharper results. With only monochrome or very limited color options supported in current e-paper implementations, you might ask why e-paper exists at all, especially given today's super sharp AMOLED and LCD screens, which kick out 16 million colors or more at densities sometimes higher than 500 pixels per inch. The folks at e-ink corporation have plenty of answers to that, some of which take the form of surprising applications. It'd be costly and power intensive to make changeable retail price tags with LCD, for example. E-ink makes a lot more sense here. Same with oversized wall clocks, or cabinet lock readouts, or supermarket divider advertisements, or really anywhere there's a premium on space and power. It's the latter area that really comes into play in our mobile-focused world. We're almost always bemoaning the poor battery life of this smartphone or that tablet, and e-ink is a technology that's only using power if it's changing state. So when it's just showing a static page, it's not consuming any energy at all. Witness the incredible power savings we got when we switched to the Yoda Phone 2's e-paper display, documented in our full review. The tendency of the display to remain static in its inert state also makes e-ink panels ideal for decorations, whether they're integrated into the device or added on via a third-party accessory. Finally, the reflective nature of e-ink eliminates the need for a backlight in brightly lit environments, and the durability of the panels makes for a very rugged display. Those factors combined make for an outstanding reading experience on a portable, durable device, which plays a big part in the enduring popularity of the Kindle and other e-readers. I saw a lot more from e-ink during my product tour. Oversized presentation tablets for the enterprise, undersized wearables for the fitness-focused, testaments to the technology's resiliency, and peaks at its possible future applications. And while the more traditional displays of the world are certainly in no danger from e-ink, at least in the mobile space, well, they're not supposed to be. Electronic paper is at its best when supplementing more conventional screens in specific applications. And given the sense of momentum I got from E-Ink Corporation during my visit, I think the most interesting developments are probably yet to come. Again, folks, to see e-paper in action, be sure to check out our Yodaphone 2 review here on YouTube and at pocketnow.com. 
And to see more Boots on the Ground coverage, check out our videos on how Sapphire screens are made and how AT&T protects its network from natural disasters. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, reminding you to keep your capsules properly polarized. We'll see you next time.